Each week as we gather, we love to celebrate, to remember our Lord's death on the cross, and to proclaim His coming, His return. We would like to do that again this morning, and I want to turn your attention to one verse in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 14. If you don't have a Bible, we'd love for you to have one, Um, so you can put your hand up, and the men coming down the aisles will put a Bible in your hands. Uh, If you don't own a Bible, we'd love for you to keep this so that you can read God's Word for yourself. God writes through the author to the letter of Hebrews in chapter 10 and verse 14. For by one offering, he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. In preparing our hearts to take communion this morning, I want us to think about what Jesus has done for all who belong to him, for all who believe in him. And we have a remarkable statement in a very short space of two magnificent realities that are true of every believer. A perfect status and a being perfected process. A perfect status whereby you and I are declared perfect, righteous before God. And a being perfected status where our lives are being brought into conformity with that status, the process of bringing us into conformity with that status. Notice what the writer says in Hebrews 10, 14, for by one offering, that offering of course is Jesus' death on the cross. By this one offering, he has perfected for all time. That is, Jesus places all who believe into the category and status of perfection. And that status of perfection endures forever. He has perfected them for all time by his one offering. That is, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, your perfect status before God can never be taken away. It can never be marred. It can never be brought lower. It can never be brought anything below the standard of perfection which Jesus himself purchased for you, believer, by his death on the cross. And that status of perfection is a gift given to you. It is not a standard you have earned or achieved or have merited or deserved. It is only procured for you by Jesus' satisfactory death at the cross, where he absorbs the wrath of God against all of your sin and credits to you his own righteousness. And that perfect status endures for all time. And it endures only for those who are in this second category, those who are being sanctified. That is, every believer, everyone who has been declared perfect, is also in the category of being sanctified. That is, being brought into conformity with that perfect status which belongs to Jesus Christ. And here's the twin reality of the Christian life. You stand before God justified. And you are being sanctified. You stand before God with the perfect status of flawless righteousness. And yet your life now involves righteousness and sin. Sin which is covered completely by the blood of Christ at the cross. Sin from which we must repent. And sin from which we must be purified in an ongoing process called sanctification. The reality of this verse is that those two things, that status and that process, are inevitable realities of that one same person, the Christian. That's you if you're a believer in Jesus Christ. You cannot have one without the other. You cannot have the perfect status and not be being sanctified. And you can't have it the other way around either. Both of these realities are purchased, procured by Jesus Christ. The perfect status procured by Jesus absorbing the wrath of God and giving us his righteousness. And that process procured by our being united to Jesus in his death. 
the new birth that happens by the Holy Spirit where there are new desires, new capacities, a power over sin, and the inevitable process of sanctification, of being conformed to Christ's image, of putting away sin progressively. If you're not a believer here this morning, what we're about to do, take a a cup of juice and a piece of bread. These are symbols of Jesus' blood and his body, spilled and broken on behalf of believers. If you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, if you don't yet have this perfect status, if you are not experiencing this sanctification process, then I would just encourage you to let the bread and the cup pass you by. These are symbols for believers to rejoice in what Jesus Christ has done for us. If you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, you do have the opportunity to place your faith in him, to be born again to trust in Jesus Christ and his completely perfect death on the cross as your only hope of salvation. I would encourage you to do that today, to find somebody to speak to about the state of your soul and how you can know that you have eternal life. You believers this morning, as you hold the cup and the bread You have an opportunity in a few moments of silence to think about your own heart and its condition. Are there sins left unconfessed? Are there things to take before the Lord and and enjoy the forgiveness that he has purchased by Christ? Are there things in your life for which you need to make plans of genuine biblical repentance to turn away from sin and to see God continue his sanctification process in you? So take a few moments Examine your hearts, and when your hearts are ready, take the bread and the cup on your own, and I'll close us in prayer.